team, we've got breaking news for you tonight. Pentagon officials tell Fox News they cannot confirm an AP story that the U.S. has concluded Russia knew in advance of Syria's heinous uh, chemical weapons attack last week, which prompted President Trump to order those Tomahawk missile strikes in that Syrian air base. Meanwhile, Russia and Iran have issued a joint statement, uh, in fact, yesterday declaring, quote, the United States crossed red lines by attacking Syria. From now on, we will respond to anyone, including America, if it attacks Syria and crosses the red lines without taking into consideration any reaction and consequences, end quote. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson heads to Moscow tomorrow amid confusion uh, over the current goals for the administration with respect to Syria, ISIS, and Assad. Roll tape. The Trump doctrine is something that he articulated throughout the campaign, which is that America's first. We're going to make sure that our national interests are protected, um, that we do what we can to make sure that our interests, both economically and national security, are at the forefront. And we're not just going to become the world's policemen running around the country, running around the world. Here to discuss Michael Preachin, DeRoy Murdoch, and Emily Jasinski. Emily, let me start with you because uh, a lot of Trump faithful were very upset by the strike. In fact, I was shocked at the sort of uh, pushback that he had from some folks who had been on the so-called Trump train from the very beginning. And it looked like Sean Spicer went out of his way to reassure everyone we're not going to be the world's policeman. But at the same token, it feels like uh, the president is saying, hey, if things ever get as bad as that we saw in, in Syria, we will step up to the plate. Right, and that's why it's confusing, is because what it looks like um, is that the Trump administration used this strike, really, and they've said this in their own words, to send a message, to send a message to the world, to send a message to Bashar Assad, that the United States, you know, is trying to regain and re regain that torch of moral leadership in the world. So now we have to ask, was this, you know, purely to send a message, or is this an indication that we will be continuing to intervene in the future? That's why we don't, that's what we don't have answers to right now, and that's what people are sort of, you know, confused by, is that's what we really need to know. Is there more military intervention in the future in Syria? That's the question. Well, Mike, uh, we know uh, that, that the, uh, the administration, obviously, uh, the, 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 I think there's a 57 percent approval rating on this. So uh, outside of the infighting uh, amongst GOP, uh, the new GOP and the old GOP and the neocons, it, it feels like that this was a strike that need to be done in a sense that America becomes sort of a feckless, voiceless, or no one took us seriously. Uh, no matter what anyone thinks, at some point, uh, everyone around the world had to go back to the drawing board. Yeah, this was a strong message. Not only did it hurt Assad, it embarrassed Putin and sent a message to Tehran, sent a message to Pyongyang, and it sent a message to Beijing. Uh, one of the most important things, I think, is General Mattis and H.R. McMaster found out who their commander-in-chief was, and I think they're pretty happy with it. But did vice versa, though, that uh, President Trump lean on them and sort of say to them, hey, you are my guys. Uh, and I'm not going to listen to perhaps some of the other voices in the White House, even those that help propel me to the office. Well, the job to present uh, target packets to the president was pretty easy because they've been sitting there for about five years within action. So uh, H.R. McMaster said there were two plans. One target set had one base. The other target set had the other six or, or the other five. So I think there will be... Uh, another response, and those bases will probably be the targets. Well, DeRoy, we've heard that there will be some economic sanctions, and uh, Nikki Haley, uh, more than anyone else, has uh, really been, she's been the loudest hawk on this, and if you listen to her alone, it sounds like uh, more military action is coming, and it won't take chemical, uh, it won't take chemical warfare to spark it. Well, I think we certainly needed to send the message that we couldn't allow a chemical weapons attacks to become the new normal, which is what they really were under Obama. If they continued under this president as well, uh, people would get the sense, well, you can use chemical weapons and you're not going to have any consequences. I think we show there are consequences. And the question is, what happens after this? Do we leave Assad in? Do we remove him? And that gets very, very... Uh, debatable and, and very muddled. I mean, we've had situations where you, you basically uh, knock out, if you will, the Mussolini and in comes the next person who's the Hitler. Uh, we've, we've had that kind of situation uh, in other nations where Assad is not at all powerful. Sure, and after, the, and after is, the so called Arab after, Spring and the exactly, uprising, right. we've seen yeah. that happen again. History repeats. Gaddafi so. left, the next people who come in are terribly palatable. But by the same token, Emily, it seems to me, again, listening to Sean Spicer and then all the Sunday talk shows that perhaps the administration is going to go after Assad. It's just that he may not be uh, the number one target. First, first and foremost, obviously, is neutralizing and eradicating ISIS. And then it feels like, uh, particularly if we can get the help of Russia, moving out Assad and letting the people, all the people uh, of Syria, have a voice here. Is that plausible? Yeah. 
Yeah, well, it's, it's so hard to say right now, and I think part of the reason is because we're sort of facing a lot of bad options and not really many good ones. And I think that's why it's difficult to understand where the Trump administration is coming on this, because for everything that Nikki Haley is saying, we're kind of getting a different message from uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. And so it's almost as though they actually do have these policy disagreements that they haven't resolved internally, and we're seeing them kind of play out in the media. And I think that's what happens. I mean, obviously, you don't want to create a vacuum in Syria, and that's what sort of the foreign policy establishment is cautioning about. We're facing some really difficult options, none of which is particularly good. Um, and so I think the administration is struggling that right, struggling with that right now. Well, Michael, uh, immediately after uh, the strikes on uh, war, war planes did take off from that very base. Now, I know uh, Senator McCain said we should have cratered the runway. By the same token, Sean Spicer said that was more of a gimmick. You had a couple planes on the side that were already gassed up. Uh, that that it, the, the, the airfield is ineffective. Let's face it, we could have done more damage. We, did, we determined how much damage we wanted to do. And the big question is today, even though our, our, emes, our nemesis rather, and some of the more belligerent actors of the world obviously had to sit up and take notice, do you think it's enough for any of them to change course? Well, I think what we actually need to do is ground Assad's Air Force so that Russia's left the only air power supporting Iranian proxies on the ground. Right now they have somebody to blame. If something goes wrong, they can always say it's Assad's jets. We have to remember, Russia has dropped cluster munitions on civilian populations. That's illegal. They've used white phosphorus. That's also illegal. What about these barrel bombs filled with gasoline? We should be upset every time a government uses weapons like that on a civilian population. It shouldn't take a chemical attack. It should, you know, these cluster bombs kill more people, and a lot of times, than these chemical attacks do. It takes a chemical attack to get noticed, and it should be. Anytime a government uses its military to, to punish civilians, we should care. DeRoy, what if it turns out this AP report is correct? Uh, we haven't been able to verify it yet, but what if Russia did indeed know uh, in some way was, uh, in, in, I don't know, in, in involved with uh, Syria dr using chemical weapons? Does that change the narrative at all? Well, if they were aware, it uh, certainly does, of their complicity even more so. I mean, it's just going to create even more tension between us and Russia. I think what's really funny is just two weeks ago we are talking about how uh, uh, Donald Trump was a puppet of Putin, and now it seems like the tensions are mounting, and whatever friendship supposedly existed there... Yeah, the bromance is out seems, the window. Yeah, the bromance is gone. That seems to, to, evap to evaporate suddenly. Well, isn't this in a way kind of good, though? Uh, we we kind of know that, that Vladimir Putin has these sort of grand ambitions, and it might be a, um, a sort of a blessing in disguise to, to nip them in the bud uh, uh, sooner rather than later for, for Donald Trump to see that despite the fact that he extended an olive branch throughout the campaigning season that this is a guy who's going to ignore it and we need to take the right measures. Yeah, I think this, this overall uh, uh, action a couple days ago sends a, a much better message than what we saw, especially towards the end of the Obama administration. We actually saw U.S. sailors being uh, stopped in the Persian Gulf by Iranian, Iranian, uh, the Iranian Navy and on their, on their knees, literally with their hands behind their heads. It was an incredible message and an image of American weakness, and I think this helps to reverse that and not a second too soon.